Hey guys, today we're going to be doing an image-based tracking project using Daiquiri. For those of you that watched the last tutorial using Layer, I'd like to point out that based on some of the feedback I received on that first video, we're going to be switching gears just a little bit. With that being said, I'm going to place a little bit more emphasis on our application and some of the strengths and weaknesses of the software that we're using, rather than focus on a step-by-step -step flow. This is because for all of these products, there does exist a general tutorial that covers most of these things. Uh, in the future, if you guys have particular questions about the way I did something, or if I have a particularly unique project, I'll post a specific instruction video. So this is the main landing page for Daiquiri as of right now. Uh, I say as of right now because Daiquiri is still in a somewhat limited release. Uh, they're not giving out a lot of free trials, at least not the students. In fact, as far as I know, right now, they're no longer accepting applications for student accounts. However, I do think it's really interesting for us to be able to see what's in the pipeline. Uh, and for those of you that are interested in the variety of augmented reality software that's out there, I think this is a good option to keep in mind uh, as things move forward. One of the nice things about Daiquiri is actually uh, it's sort of very open to collaboration. Uh, my entire class actually has a license for this, and we join it in a way that we are a project team. You can see all of our names, you can see all of the individual augmented files that we're working on, as well as you can allow others to have access to your projects or deny them access from your project. Um, it's a great way to have multiple people working on the same campaign or something like that. Another neat thing about Daiquiri is actually this analytics tab down here. Now, for AR developers, feedback can be extremely helpful. This is a very developing technology. And being able to see the number of interactions and the average engagement time of individual augments within the entire campaign, I feel like could be a game changing sort of feedback for us to work with. The workflow for Daiquiri is also very straightforward. If you remember from our last tutorial, or if you didn't watch, augmented reality is a process that requires you to have a tether to the physical space. In our last tutorial, that tether was a location-based GPS marker. For this example, I'd like us to look at doing an image-based tracking project. So to get started, all you really have to do is choose a trackable image. Click on Add Content. There's a couple different templates here. The one I've been using for doing a lot of outside augmented reality, I'm using the Out of Home billboard. I know that in the future, there's going to be other templates I've seen on the site. Uh, I'm particularly interested to see what the game template is going to be like, what kind of functionality is going to be built into that. But for right now, let's take a look at this billboard template. From here, you can easily pick out your file for your trackable image. However, I want to take a minute to talk about what makes a good tracking image. Now, Daiquiri will automatically give you a rating of 1 to 5 for your tracking image to tell you how well it will work. But some of the criteria it's looking for are non-repeating patterns or hard edges, things that will help it pick out your image from a background or a scene and be easily recognized. For now, let's take a look at a project I've already set up that has a five rating for the tracking image. Now this is the designer view. You notice there's a canvas. You can see our reference image is right there in the middle. Now, there's actually a lot of things right in the interface that jump out at you. You can drag and drop pretty much any type of content right on here. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's talk a little bit about the application and what a image-based tracking project is good for. Now, in our last tutorial, we worked with a geolocation-based project. If we can think of some things that that would be good for, we could think maybe as for mile markers for a trail. You could think of it as locations of houses for a star map. We could think of it as uh, scenic views around a city. There are many things that we could attach to a geolocation map. So what are some things that are really good for a visual-based project? I think image projects really lend themselves to sort of occupying otherwise paid space in the public sphere. So you think about on the subway, there's those certain frames for the ad. You think about your bus stations. Everything's in the same case. Everything's in the same size space. If 
finding these images or, or finding these other ads actually provides you with a platform to tether your own content. As you can see, what I've chosen to work with is actually the door ad of McDonald's near me. The reason I chose this ad in particular is I actually noticed these balloons here in the background and I thought this would be a really great thing to animate, to sort of add to this advertising experience. I do want to take a second to talk about what makes this such a great tracking image. You notice there's a lot of bold colors, lines, and shapes in this image, but there's no repeating pattern that's too complex that might cause some instability or inaccuracy with our system. This is what you're looking for when you're trying to find something that will give you a level of realism, uh, meaning that your augment will so completely cover your target advertisement that when looking through your display device, it'll be a pretty compelling experience. You won't actually be able to see any traces of the old ad and you won't have that jittering that sort of takes people out of your experience. For this particular project, you can see up here in the Experiences tab, it actually keeps track of all the experiences, meaning additional images or videos or 3D content that you place as your augment. They appear up here in the right hand corner. And what I've created is a simple After Effects animation that actually uses part of our original image and animates only the balloons in the background. And it's really as simple as that. I mean, with just a tracking image and creating some outside content, which in this case I made an After Effects and, and brought in as an overlay, we're ready to get out and test. All you have to do is save and publish here in the top right hand corner. Another part of what makes Daffy so comprehensive, I think, is that you don't actually have to find the name of your augment or a channel once you launch the app. You're actually ready to start scanning from the moment that you open it. So if you think of your user appeal or how accessible it is, I think this is definitely a step up above some of the others. So let's go ahead and take a look at this project. You'll notice that it does take it a minute to load. However, once it registers, I think the image is actually really solid. You notice we're not seeing the same kind of jittering problems that we were having with the geolocation-based layer. Uh, this project is actually very solid. I think it's worth mentioning that the service we used last time layer, it does have a similar a print-based image tracking feature. However, we took a look at its geolocation properties. Um, I would still say that Daiquiri is the best image tracking augmented reality that I've used. Uh, we're going to take a look at another company next time, Matayo, and their creator system. I uh, can do something similar, but I have not had as stable results with image tracking as I have with Daiquiri. And these are the kinds of comparisons that I'm really interested in getting into. And the reason that I'm sort of shifting away from a step-by-step -step tutorial uh, is because I think there are a lot of evolving options out there for augmented reality development. And I think that the reality is that each of these companies will have its own strengths and weaknesses. I think that layer, at least for me, was a very easy way to understand how geolocation works for augmented reality, and I think that Daiquiri is a really strong contender for visual-based. And we're going to see next time that I also think Matayo has some of its own particular strengths. So if you guys had any questions about what I did today with Daiquiri, or if you had any ideas for projects I could do with Daiquiri, or, or something that you wanted to see or see attempted, I would love to try them out. Just leave me a comment. Or if you still have some questions about what is this layer I'm talking about, go ahead and check out my last video where we tackled some sort of the basics of geolocation and did a flow um, with free stuff that anybody can, can make, a, make a quick augment with. My next project is going to tackle a point cloud-based project with Matayo. So in the meantime, if any of you guys create something with Daiquiri or with Layer, please post it as a reply. I would love to see what you guys are working on. Until then, thanks guys.